card? Yeah, it has a little five with two dashes next to it. Too. Great. I don't know what you're talking about. It's in time. <laughs> okay. I am going to talk now. I'm talking. I, I was waiting for you. You're still talking. <laughs> All right. We're gonna talk. This will be very short. This is gonna talk. Um, I just want to talk about electromagnetism as well as AC circuits. Okay. Um, first, electromagnetism. What somebody knows on well, Let's say I have a little circuit here, and every time I flick a switch, okay, here's my here's my current. Let's say one time I accidentally left a compass right here. I flick the switch, the compass turns. Switch it off, the compass goes back to the original position. I flick it again, compass turns again. Okay? Turn it off, compass goes back to its original position. What they figured out was if you have an electric current, you're going to have electromagnetism. Okay? You're going to have a ma magnetic field. So what you could actually do, and what people started, you know, if you play with this, you could actually, if you had the compass going, you could turn it on, and as it's moving and getting closer to where it's going to stop, you turn it off. And you can actually just kind of, with your timing, flick it on and off, on and off, and get the compass to spin. Okay? And what you're actually doing is you're creating your first electric motor. Because that's exactly what a motor does. And I'm going to explain that in a second. But here's the deal. Here's your electric field, or here's your magnetic field. We know this already. We remember this. We have, we have uh, between north and south. It was right in between. You have these straight lines. You have a bit of a curvature here. Okay, I'm going to get back to that field in a second. All right, now, the electric motor is basically this idea. What they do is they have um, set solid state north and south magnets on the outer edge of a motor. Okay, and on the inner part, they're going to have a, um, an electric ma electromagnet. Okay, and the way they're going to do it is they're just going to have a coil wire and they're going to have a current running through it. And because the wire is coiled, if you think about your right hand rule, remember we did right hand rule for rotation? It applies for, for uh, magnetism too. If you have current coming out of the wall right, right now, Okay, and you curl your fingers with your right hand, that is the way the electromagnetism will be going around that wire. Okay? Well, if you coil the wire, that means on the inside, all these wires will all have magnetism going the same direction. So that's why you see wire getting coiled to get a stronger magnet, because it concentrates all the magnetic field to go through here. Okay? Well, anyway, so you have electromagnet and you have regular solid state magnets. So if you turn the electricity on and you have this be north and that south, well, then obviously the north is going to want to be repelled from that and it's going to be attracted towards that. So it's going to be pushed away from here, pulled towards there. And it's going to want to stop right here. Okay, it turns so that the north would want to be right next to the south and the south would want to be right next to north. But what they do with electromagnet is they just they mess with the timing. And so with this with the motor, as soon as the north reaches to, towards the south and wants to stop, and as soon as the south here reaches towards the north and wants to stop, they turn off the electricity. And it was spinning, so it goes a little bit further because it has a little bit of momentum and wants to keep spinning. And then as soon as it gets there, they change the current. And all of a sudden, this thing that was north on this side that wanted to stop in the south, this is now going to be south, and it would get repelled. And this, is, this side is now north, and it's going to get repelled, and it just keeps going. So that's all an electric motor is. And you have outer magnets, and you have inner magnets. And as soon as you get it spinning and it's supposed to stop, it turns off the electricity, lets it roll a little, little bit more because it has momentum, and then it, it changes the polarization and wants to push it away. And that's an electric motor. Just like flicking this on and off, on and off, on and off to get the compass spinning. Same idea. Okay? Um, now, they figured out that electric current creates a magnetic field. So then they said, well, what if we go the opposite way? So what they did was 
They took a magnetic field and they put a wire next to it. And guess what happened? That was just to wake you up. When they put the electric wire next to a magnetic field, absolutely nothing happened. But then they moved it back and forth. And when you move them a wire and you cross a magnetic field, you do get a current. Okay? You have to cross perpendicular. If I took a wire here and just went back and forth this way or back and forth that way, I wouldn't get any current. But if I take a wire and I keep crossing the magnetic field, I'll put electricity on a wire. Okay? So if you kept moving a wire back and forth near a magnet, you get electricity. And that's exactly what, that's exactly how we get electricity nowadays. Okay? That idea. So just like the electric motor we had before, in the opposite way, if I have this wire and I keep spinning it in and out of a magnetic field, I can put electricity on the wire. Okay, so I have a coil of wire, I have my magnetic field, and I, I just keep crossing the magnetic field lines, I'm going to keep producing electrical current on that, on that wire. This is how all our power plants work, except for the solar ones. Okay, power plants work with finding some kind of other way to spin around this coil wire to create electricity. Okay, if it's a coal plant, you know, if they're using coal to heat up water to make steam spin the turbines, could be that. Could be a windmill, right? You have wind causing the, the coils of wire to spin inside a magnetic field and create electricity. It could be a nuclear plant, all right? Nuclear plant would be the same thing. You're just using nuclear heat to turn the water into steam and cause these to spin. Could be hydroelectric taken from a dam, you know, the Hoover Dam. Same idea. All right? That's how we create electricity. We spin wire inside a magnetic field, and every time you have that change in magnetic field on a wire, you create electrical current. <clears throat> have you noticed your, uh, maybe your toothbrush, uh, toothbrush charger? You put it, you don't actually plug it in, you just put it essentially right near it, you know, on top of it, and you get it to charge without actually touching it. What's it called now? The, the cell phones have those like power mats you can put. You don't have to actually plug it in. Same idea. It's a change in electrical current. It's a change in that mag magnetic field back and forth causes current to run into your battery. All right? So the basic idea you need to understand is this. Current creates magnetic fields, changes in current, I'm sorry, changes in magnetic field create current. And I'll let you copy that and we'll pause for station identification. So it's like a vicious cycle, like a button. Pause as in pressing the button again. Now, a transformer. This is why Thomas Edison was stubborn and kind of hurt himself big time. Thomas Edison did not understand how AC was much more useful. Okay, A transformer uses that electromagnetic field. What a transformer does is it takes AC. It has to be alternating current. You have a current go this way, whoops, and then you have a current go the other way. AC means it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay. When you have that change in electromagnetic field, it will cause current to run on this wire without touching All right? DC doesn't change. So DC cannot use transformers. But here's the idea. If you, had, if you look at the ratio of the coils, if there's two uh, coils around here and three coils around there, the ratio to the voltages will be the same as well. So without even touching this wire, if I have 120 volts of AC on this wire, here I'd have 180 volts put on that wire without touching it. Okay? So whatever the coil ratios are, 2 to 3, will be what the voltage ratios are also. But that's the way you create, you can put electricity on something.
What happens for the power company? The, the idea is this. Let's say that your power company gives you 10,000 volts. Okay? The big, huge power lines going, to, going out from the uh, power station will be 10,000 volts. You can't plug anything here at 10,000 volts or everything will blow. But with 10,000 volts, it's going to be a really high voltage and a really small current, which means it can go really long distances. DC can't do this. Okay? You get to a power substation and it takes the 10,000 volts. It uses a transformer just like we had. So one side would be basically 10,000 coils of wire. The other side would be 1,000 coils of wire. And your output voltage now would only be 1,000 volts. So the power lines going from a substation to your neighborhood would be 1,000 volts. Okay? Now 1,000 volts, again, we can't plug in. We need 120. So there will be a transformer just outside your house to share with your neighbors. And that will drop it down from 1,000 volts to 120. Okay? So what it does is that allows you to have a really high voltage but a really small current travel hundreds of miles across the country. But when you want to get to your house, you have to drop it down to a lower voltage. Okay? And transformers are what do that. All right? So basically each transformer is, is this basic idea, except with more and more coils. If this is going to be 10,000 volts and this is going to be 1,000 volts, well then you need to have 10,000, 1,000, you need to have 10 times more coils on this side than on that side. Okay? That's how it works. So that's going to be how, why we have AC. Thomas Edison was stubborn. Um, his arch nemesis, Tesla, was all about AC and, and uh, you know, but and that's probably why Edison was so far against it, because Tesla was big into AC. Okay? Was, was that? Tesla car. Tesla's been dead a long time. He didn't build the electric car. I think that's just an honor of him. Okay, we'll pause or stop.